We're going to continue doing that as we go forward. You know, but more broadly, we've all seen the rallies without the mask, the Rose Garden event without the mask. The president's family refused to wear masks at the debate. And the president seemed pretty proud of that at Tuesday's debate. Let's listen. I don't wear masks like him. Every time you see him, he's got a mask. He could be speaking 200 feet away from it. He shows up with the biggest mask I've ever seen. And I'll have 25, 35,000 people show up at airports. We use airports. Are you not worried about the We have a lot of people. Well, so far, we have had no problem whatsoever. We've Come had on. no negative effect. And we've well, had 35, 40,000 right. people at wanna... these rallies. Hasn't the cavalier approach to mask and social distancing at these rallies been a mistake? Will it change going forward? Uh, again, I'll push back on that and say it hasn't been uh, cavalier at all. We take it very seriously. It's why we give everyone coming to rallies or to events, we give them a mask. We check their temperature. You know, I'd say that with regard to Joe Biden, I think too often he's used the mask as a prop. Uh, mask is very important, but even if he's, uh, he could be, uh, 20, 30 feet away from the nearest person and still have the mask on, uh, that's not uh, going to change anything uh, that's out there. But also we've seen with uh, with Joe Biden, I mean, we can't all just stay in our basement for the rest of our lives. We have to get out there and live our lives and take this on, develop the vaccine, develop more therapeutics and defeat it. Americans, George, want to get life back to normal. That is the driving thing that everyone's lives right now. They want to get life back to normal. You can't just stay hidden in your basement the entire time. Everyone wants to get life back to normal. There's no question about that. But has the president taken it too far? One example, on Thursday, the president went ahead with his fundraiser in Bedminster, even after the White House knew that Hope Hicks had tested positive. Why wasn't that event canceled? Well, again, I'd say that uh, the news, as we saw from the public reports, the news of when they saw about Hope Hicks, um, as soon as that happened, then President Trump was tested. Uh, he did not get his test back until later on Thursday evening. Uh, you know, it is notable that anyone who comes to an event, uh, such as the fundraiser, those at Bedminster, is tested. They do have their temperature taken. Uh, no, they but are but required hold, to Hold on, Jason. This is the point is the not president. the president's test isn't the point. We know that Jared Kushner, Dan Scavino, Kaylee McEnany were told to stay back. The president had been in close contact with Hope Hicks. Why would he go forward with this fundraiser after knowing he'd been in close contact with somebody who had just tested positive? Well, George, what I can't speak to, since I'm not part of White House operations, I'm not part of the White House medical unit, is the exact how much time he was spending with Hope and in the proximity for these things. I can't speak to that. I got to let the White House go and do that. What I can speak to is that I think it was very smart that the White House medical team did take President Trump to Walter Reed as a precautionary measure. Uh, obviously, as we've seen from the reports, that there were some concerns with how he was doing. We should all be very happy that President Tr Trump is doing much better today, and he was doing much better yesterday. Yesterday. So he's on the recovery uh, right now. I think he'll be back in short order. He's anxious to get back out there on the campaign trail. And that's what I can speak to, having spoken with the president at length yesterday and also seen the briefing from his doctors out in front of Walter Reed. We all want him to get well as quickly as possible. Let's talk about the campaign. Even before this diagnosis, uh, the president was behind. And there's a new poll from the Wall Street Journal and NBC News out today showing that Joe Biden is leading 53 to 39, a 14 point lead. How can you come back from that kind of a deficit? Uh, well, we did it in 2016 uh, because, number one, a lot of times these polls are inaccurate. I remember a uh, ABC Washington Post poll that came out just a week or a week and a half before the election in 2016 that said that we were down double digits and now President Trump is in the White House. Uh, so uh, clearly these polls, these national polls sometimes are inaccurate uh, or they're not sampling the right people. Or they're not getting the right spreads. As we look at the battleground states, uh, what you need to get to 270, we feel very good about our positioning. In particular, I think I think our strength out west, uh, both with Arizona and Nevada, is looking very good. Uh, in Florida, we continue to look good. Numbers are con Our lead is growing, as we see in North Carolina and Georgia, from internal numbers. Pennsylvania is going to be tight. Michigan is going to be tight. The whole upper Midwest is what this thing could come down to. And so we're launching this week, while President Trump is on the recovery, Operation Mega, both with the vice president, the first family, dozens of our key supporters and our surrogates. We're going to be fanning out all over the country following the vice president's debate on Wednesday, also combined with a number of virtual events. We're going to have our first big kickoff virtual event Monday night. So the president was excited to hear this Operation Mega that we're going to uh, get everyone around the country and, and really pick up the, the banner and campaign until he can get back out there himself. Jason Miller, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you, George. Biden campaign.